Hi, my name is Kat and you're watching Kat Rose Astrology. And today I've got your weekly astrology forecast for the week of the 18th to the 24th of October. Just before I get started, I'll just remind you that my Kickstarter is still running now for my new book, Discovering Your Personal Diamond. If you'd like to get an early bird copy of it or pick up any of the other rewards that I'm attaching to the book um, in this Kickstarter. Uh, so things like getting a signed hard cover version of the book, which I'm not going to make available anywhere else, um, and different astrology readings, one-to-one uh, -one sessions, uh, workshop courses, and much more. So you can check that out at the link below. Thanks again to everyone who's been supporting the campaign so far. Looking forward to you uh, letting me know what you think of the book. So week starting on Monday the 18th, the first thing I wanted to talk about is two planets who will be stationing uh, direct that day, Mercury and Jupiter, which I think is really interesting, just the fact that these two um, planets who are thought of as very opposing planets, you can even see that in the chart itself, Mercury's signs um, are all opposite Jupiter signs. Um, and that means basically that when one planet is in the other's sign, they tend to not be so comfortable. They're sort of further, furthest away from home in their detriment or exile. So yeah, there's just an interesting connection between Mercury and Jupiter throughout this Mercury retrograde cycle. And actually the last lunation cycle, um, since that last full moon, uh, the last quarter moon was in Gemini, the new moon was in Pisces, the first quarter was in Sag, um, and then the full moon was in Pisces. Uh, so those kind of important stages of that previous lunation cycle were really kind of connected to Mercury and Jupiter, um, the dance that they've been in. Also, Mercury and Jupiter have been making those trines to each other. Um, there's one more of those to go. I feel like there's been a positive turn for, for, for these planets who tend not to get on with each other. I feel like this whole thing has been about a generation of a more positive harmony between these two um, archetypes, basically. And what would that look like? Well, one of the best outcomes, I think, for this you know, positive interaction between Mercury and Jupiter would be being more open-minded. That's like a Jupiter thing about other people's beliefs and ideas um, and holding them more lightly. That's a Mercury thing. So rather than kind of getting into these big debates, which so many of us are you know, finding ourselves in um, having right now, even if you, we're not having them verbally, uh, we're having them in our heads or having them on social media. So I feel like this is, you know, a, a question of, of Mercury and Jupiter, that kind of debate, uh, debate over beliefs, debate over um, uh, lots of different ideas and, and looking at the details versus looking at the big picture, the facts versus what do you believe? That whole story, obviously that's been playing out on a bigger way, you know, for the last um, well, year now with, with the nodes being Gemini and Sagittarius. Uh, but I also think as we're coming to the end of the, the eclipses in Gemini and Sag, which we'll be seeing at the end of this year, it's also a time where hopefully we can find some kind of support for both the Mercury and Jupiter end of things in our lives, a bit more harmony within those areas of life. Uh, I'm not expressing this very well because Mercury at the time of recording is still very much retrograde. But um, yeah, I just think that this Mercury-Jupiter story is a very important theme um, for all of us, for all of us, not only this week, this lunation, that previous lunation cycle, but also this year. And, you know, what's to come, you know, if we're thinking about some of those big outer planet shifts that we're going to be having in the years to come, Uranus, Neptune and Pluto are all going to be changing signs. I just think that one of the more helpful things would be, you know, coming to terms with, with this Mercury, Jupiter dynamic um, in our lives. Uh, and, and like I said, that I think for me, that means about, it, it speaks a lot to, to tolerance and an open-mindedness in many different ways. So. Okay, so those are just some thoughts about Mercury and Jupiter stationing direct. I mean, obviously, Mercury stationing direct, we all know that that's a nice thing. It means that if you've been like delaying buying any technical things or big purchases, cars and stuff like that, um, this is more like a, a go ahead time as Mercury will start to pick up speed over the next um, week or so. Uh, same with Jupiter. If you've been feeling a little bit like your, you know, like your spiritual practices or, um, studies have been taking a bit of a back seat or you've been feeling a bit down and less optimistic for the last few months well potentially they could take an upturn again so it's, it's nice to have both those planets going forward again next up on the 19th we've got mars in a trine to jupiter so this is a classic like macho bravado trine when these two planets meet 
uh, I think of Mars and Libra is as like a little bit of a pretty boy. Um, but with the kind of this kind of edge to him, uh, I think of Billy from Stranger Things. I don't know if you most of you probably watched that, I assume. Um, I think of Meatloaf, who actually has Mars trying Jupiter in his chart, uh, is also a Libra sun, Venus and Libra. We're thinking about a powerful theatrical nature, um, a kind of positive can-do attitude, someone or a situation where we're, we're driven towards progress and gain, but also potential for excess and brashness. Um, again, kind of like biting off more than we can chew, uh, taking on more than we need and, and kind of doing it in a bit of a posturing way uh, to sort of like show that we're we're the strong ones. Yeah, and you might even see this in the news, um, kind of countries doing different things, acting in a certain way to kind of like look like the, the tough guys effectively. Um, but yeah, it's all, think about these planets, they're both an air sign. So I think it could also be a lot of like, you know, it's a lot of hot air, literally. So if, if anyone in your life is trying to kind of, I don't know if you're on the dating scene and somebody's like coming off as a bit too like bravado-y, um, hopefully this try and just, you know, it's a harmonious thing and it could be a lot of fun, but also you can see through it if, if you need to. On the 20th, we've got the full moon in Aries. So what's important about this moon uh, is that the ruler of the moon right now is Mars, who is in detriment in Libra. A tense moon for that reason. Um, it's again, it, it can't really be supported that well by Mars right now. Um, what's helpful to understand how this moon might be playing out in your life in terms of something coming to fruition or fulfillment is to look back to the last new moon that we had in Aries, which was on April 12th of this year, um, as well as look at the whole sign house that Aries lines up with for you. So for me, for example, this is my 10th house. Um, so in April, literally around those days uh, of this year, um, I did some speaking engagements um, and it was the first I'd ever really done about astrology. So in the sort of astrology field, that was like a, a big sort of moment for me. These new moons in my 10th house make sense. Um, and now, you know, six months later, I'm releasing this book. Um, I've been on like a heck of a lot of podcasts in the last month, which is really cool. Um, what else? And with my book coming out, if I look back to April of this year, that was actually when I lost a big fucking portion of my research for the book. Uh, and it was also a turning point in my decision to um, kind of go back and, and, and do it anyway, even though I'd lost all of this research. So anyway, these, these are the kinds of themes that you can see um, panning out over a six month cycle, especially if we look around the days of that new moon in Aries and looking at the full moon in Aries. It's a really fun thing to do. I highly recommend it. Yeah, I talked a lot more about this full moon uh, on Spencer Michaud's channel, uh, YouTube channel earlier uh, last week on Friday. So if you'd like to check that out, um, I'm going to try to put the link to that below as well. So we had a really great conversation about that full moon. Um, on the 22nd, we've got Mars making another aspect. Mars has got a busy one this week. It's a very Marsy week. Mars square Pluto. Uh, this is just difficult. You know, you know, Mercury, Venus, Sun squaring Pluto, they're one thing, but Mars squaring Pluto, this this could be genuinely dark. Uh, not to scare anyone, I'm not interested in scaring anyone on this channel. Uh, what I am interested in is helping us just, you know, prepare, prepare ourselves and and be aware of, of what we what could be happening because uh Pluto transits can be kind of sneaky and uh we can be susceptible to control, domination. Uh, somebody exerting force to overpower us, or this is something that maybe we're witnessing elsewhere. I mean, I've witnessed, these are the kinds of things that you might witness on a more like mundane global level as well. So don't, don't worry about this being so personal to you either. The result anyway, the result of this, when we try so hard to control things, this, this can, Mars Pluto can speak a lot about control and power. Um, is that we often hurt ourselves or we hurt people very close and dear to us. And I say that because Mars is in Libra. We are thinking about the other very much. We are thinking about our loved ones and, and our friends. And often, if you really think about what it means to try to control something, the often, often the reason that we try to control things is because we're scared. We're scared that we'll lose control. We're scared of what happens if you know we weren't in control. Um, it's all about fear. And Mars-Pluto energy um, 
is is a kind of energy where someone or we might appear very courageous and daring, um, especially after that trine between Mars and Jupiter, which I think speaks a lot about like kind of bravado and courage. But actually behind it is fear. And, and that's partly because of Pluto, but also Mars. And fear begets fear. Like if we sort of act in a scared way, other people will start acting in a scared defensive way and, and our world gets smaller as a result of it. You know, and, and animals are a great example of this. You know, if you're freaked out around a horse, the horse will pick it up and it's, you know, it's not going to go well for either of us. Um, so see it in like horror films all the time when like the dogs or the animals pick up on something bad before the humans do. But if I project ease and confidence, that horse or animal or whatever is going to be more likely to trust me. And it's the same with people, really. We also see explosive, destructive reactions with Mars Pluto. We see it in the natural world with volcanoes and stuff like that. But also in people, that kind of explosive energy. Uh, and while that can have very powerful impacts and effects, they aren't very constructive when it's just pure liquid magma or like a flying into a, a red hot rage or white hot rage um, with this Mars Pluto transit. Constructive Mars Pluto energy is very carefully directed energy. And, you know, remembering it means that we're remembering that all we can really control is how we wield our energy and how we respond to things and basically surrendering to everything else. And also, it can be a very confident energy because if you know your own power and you know that that ultimately there's nothing to fear because we're all eternal spirit souls. I think it's it's remembering that and and acting with courage in the face of truly scary things, which Mars, Mars Pluto can bring up. So it's an opportunity for that. And it's also an opportunity for us to go willingly into the darkness, facing our own shadows and doing our best to accept those shadows and the messy, dark areas of life as best we can, accepting those in other people as well. So, yeah, it's again, it's it's a rough transit, but I do think that there's always going to be a positive way that we can meet it can meet our fate as best we can um, with a bit of awareness so last transit to speak about it's another dark one man this is a sort of a gloomy week uh, in many ways um it's the sun moving into scorpio going into the dark place but again this isn't a bad thing this is not a bad thing um this is just a perfect time i think perfect season for accepting the shadow stuff that i just mentioned it's a time of decay when the leaves get all mulchy i've noticed uh it's a time for going deep for going inward for digging up the dirt that we might have been, you know, pulling the rug over or like shoving in the closet. It's whatever we killed and buried in our psyche coming out from the grave and coming back to haunt us. And again, that can sound really scary, but the sun is the light in the sky, the light that illuminates the dark places. And I think it's a real benefit when it goes through these, these darker signs, um, because that is a just a reminder that we can, you know face those dark areas of life and 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 do it with a kind of intention and um and a warmth that the sun emanates okay so that's all i've got i tried to put positive spin on this week uh, as best i could so i'd be interested to hear how you've been coping with october so far um anything that you've noticed that uh the astrology has been reflecting in your life or in the wider world um, thinking about starting a new segment on this show which is going to be called astrology in the news um, and which is, yeah, a, a way to just bring some more like practical and um, real life examples to, you know, all of these transits that we talk about in a kind of vague archetypal way. So that's what's happening with me. I've got about another two weeks, just under two weeks, I think, left of this Kickstarter campaign to launch my new book, Discovering Your Personal Diamond. Again, you can support it anytime you like. Thank you in advance for everyone who will support and everyone who supported it so far. And if you'd like to find out more about my work, you can just go to catroseastrology.com. You can also come find me on Instagram at catroseastrology. Thank you for subscribing to this channel, for giving it a like, uh, for telling friends and, um, and for watching as always. All right, I'll catch you again next time.